Hi, this is Mark Ganser, Technical Account Manager at EAC Product Development Solutions with this week's Tip of the Week. Now this week really was spurred by a customer who had an actual interest, a call he brought up. He said, hey, I'm making some hook springs here, easy enough to do a helical sweep in the ends. How do I make the transition between the two areas? And I'm going to show you how to do that in a pretty easy fashion. And as a bonus, you'll get to see how you do end conditions on curves and how I can tweak curves a little bit to kind of fine-tune their appearance. So we'll get started. I'm going to create a new part here. So we'll make the helical sweep as well. And let's use an English units template. Now let's get started. When you do a sweep, a helical sweep, it's in the drop down here, what you're drawing is a really a path that the sweeps of the coils go along and what the center line of those paths is. So let's draw that up. We'll sketch that on this plane. And I'm going to put a line that this is again where the coils will go through. And over here I'll have the center of that they revolve around. And wow, that's some tremendously large units. Let's make it a little smaller thing going on here. And we'll zoom in a little closer. Let's make our center line that we're going to pop around, grab that center line and say, let's make that the axis of revolution. So we're going to revolve around that center line and the coils are going to pass through that line we drew. So let's say OK. It's going to ask us about the pitch. Let's make it a quarter of an inch so we'll have eight coils over those two inches. Then we've got to tell it, OK, what does that cross section look like? For our purposes, of course, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to put a circle in there. And I'm going to make that an eighth of an inch. Looks good. And there we have our lovely helix. So that's our starting point. Now we've got to look at uh, the ends. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to make the end 90 degrees to where this starts. So I'm going to draw it on this plane. I'm going to draw a sketch of the hook and then sweep along that path. Okay, so let's make a arc with center and ends. There we can locate the center of the arc. Let's put it maybe uh, two and three quarters. And I'm going to make it the same diameter as a spring. Just for neatness sake, there's no reason we'd have to do that, however. So I've got this lovely path. We'll zoom in on there. That we want to sweep around. So let's go sweep. Pick that. Sketch that same circular cross section. Being at the same material. Again, no reason you'd have to, but it's certainly going to make our lives a lot simpler. So there we go. There's the end of the hook. And by the way, at this point, you could have made this shape anything you wanted. You could have had it taper back down. You could have had a little added little straight section. Now here's where we have the fun with it. Now we've got to connect these two things. Now we're in two different planes. Uh, this one's coming up at an angle, so things look pretty hairy at this point but they don't have to be. We're going to make a curve and have it go through points. So let's make those points. I'm going to sketch one right there and I'm going to cheat and just dimension it to here rather than worrying about aligning it today but you could align that to the center of that curve. Remember we had a two inch overall and a half inch radii of the spring so there we go let's say okay. There's our first point, and let's take and put the second point right here. There we've got the end of that lovely sketched sweep. Okay, so we got the two points. Let's zoom in on that and say, let's create a curve, datum curve, through points. And the points we're going to put it through are here and up here. Now, normally you look and say, you know, Ganser's lost his mind here. This, this looks terrible. We've only got these two points. It's a straight line. That's no transition. But anytime we've got curve through points, we can play with this nice little tab called end condition. And I'm going to have the start point right here. I want it to be normal or perpendicular. 
to that surface. Starting to look a little better. Now we're going to go to the end point, and I want that instead of free, I want that normal. And you can see the icon changes right here to that surface. Well, that's flipping the wrong direction. Well, no big deal. Click on the arrow. All of a sudden, hey, this is looking like something we can work with. Now, you can sweep right along this and stop right here, but I wanted to show you one other thing you can do. You've got options here where you can tweak the curve. When you hit this button underneath Tweak Curve Settings, here you've got these nice pull handles where you can play around with a curve through point, play with that spline, and fool around with the curvature of this a little bit. So you can fine-tune its appearance a bit. And you can do this with any curve through points. It's a little known tool that's kind of nice for tweaking things beyond what it gives you out of the box. Now with that done, let's finish that curve. Let's go in and do one last sweep. Pick that curve we just made as the path for our cross section, lo and behold, that same eighth inch circle again. And when we finish this, and say OK, we get a very nice looking transition between the hook part of the spring and the helix part of the spring. And again, all we had to do was throw a couple points on there, throw a curve that connected the two points, and play around with the end conditions. Now if you have any question about this video or any of the other videos, go ahead and contact any one of us at EAC, or better yet, leave a comment in the comment section below this video and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.